Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Daily Disciple channel. My name is Isaac and this channel exists to help you become an authentic, inspired and passionate disciple of Christ. And today we want to talk a little bit about does being good get you into heaven? And I, just off jumping off with this question, I want to jump back to a story of when I was about about 11 years old, I was sitting at the dining room table with my brother and I have a lot of siblings. I have seven siblings, so I was sitting at the dining room table with my siblings and my brother asked me a kind of weird question, at least it was for me then. He asked me, Isaac, do you think you're a good person? And I kind of thought for a second, I was like, I'm a pretty good guy. I mean, I wasn't a re rebellious um, preteen. I pretty much did all my chores. I did everything my parents wanted me to do. I was pretty good kid according to my standards and so I was like yeah I'm a good kid and you know what that kind of led me on a journey of kind of discovering look am I good am I a good person and do good people go to heaven because even now I asked that question that same question to people that I'm witnessing to that I'm sharing Christ with do you think you're a good person do you consider yourself to be a good person because if good people truly go to heaven then that should be the biggest question should be okay am i a good person and also what is good we have to come and we encounter two kind of ideas um, or principles this idea of subjective and objective morality okay i don't want to lose you here you're like subjective and objective morale i'm out of here this is too much okay listen to me i'm 20 years old i'm just learning about this stuff as well it's not that complicated you can figure it out okay so this idea of subjective and objective morality the morality this idea of good what is good okay so subjective morality somebody once explained it to me like subjective morality is like your opinion okay we all have different opinions on things right see a subjective like morality is basically me just saying well for me this is what I think is good or this is kind of my standard and we all have different standards of what you think is good you see the person the, the axe murderer says well I'm a pretty good person I'm not you know the mass axe murderer and you know the thief says well I'm not that bad uh, you know the murderer is probably worse than me and we're always into this idea of comparison so subjective morality that's subjective morality what is objective morality okay objective morality is like the ultimate standard the one true standard and you know in order to find this one true standard this unchanging unmoving standard of goodness we have to look to God because he is the only unchanging being his character never changes his nature never changes he is he is there he is steadfast he, his morality doesn't change so he is the objective standard so we got to be looking towards him and when we look at him we see that he's actually already given us a standard of morality when i'm talking to people on the street they're often like well what what standard god didn't give us a, a, a list of rules or whatever but then they start to think a little bit more wait a minute the ten commandments and i think that's a good place to start so when you think of the Ten Commandments, maybe a couple different come to your mind. Thou shall not murder, thou shall not um, commit adultery, um, there shall, thou shall not bear false witness. And if you evaluate these for any amount of time, really, uh, you start to realize, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not meeting up. And that's kind of where I was at, even at 11, 12 years old, was like, hey, I'm not measuring up to where I thought I was. I thought I was a pretty good guy, but when I began to dive into these commandments and what God said he says um, you know I say to you if you look at a woman and lust after her you've already committed adultery in your heart and as a you know as I became a teenager that was like whoa okay that standard is a lot higher than I thought it was that's that's that standard I'm actually not a good guy you know he says if you hate your brother you're a murderer so what I want you to do, I just want you to understand what I kind of came to understand was the fact that, look, no one can measure up to God's standard. In Romans 3.10, it says, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And when you come to realize that, it's kind of like, wait a minute. If do good people go to heaven? Well, the facts are that no one is good. So that's not necessarily the question that we should be asking is, okay, 
we're not good, how do we get to heaven? How do we not only get to heaven, but a better question is, how do we mend this relationship with God? Because through all this kind of falling short of God's standard, we've rebelled against him. We've broken that relationship off with him. We've turned to our own way, to our own desires. So how do we get that back? And that's when, for me, it all began to click. You see, I'd been going to church for so many years with my family. I'd heard, heard about Jesus dying on the cross. I'd heard about, um, you know, the fact that we've all sinned, that we've all fallen short. But in that moment, I finally realized, wait a minute, I've fallen short of God's standard. I'm not a good person. It's not about me being good that gets me into heaven. It's actually Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. The fact that he has taken away my sin, that he's paid the price for my sins, that I can now live with him in eternity, right? That's not my own doing. It's not about me being a good person. It's about how good God was and his sacrifice for my sin. And today, I want to just encourage you in this because if you're anything like me when I was around 12 or 11, I know a lot of people that are still kind of like wrestling with this idea that and still holding on to this idea that I'm a good guy, you know, I'm a good girl, I, I will, I will, I'll go to heaven when I die, you know, and be based on how I perform, like, I do fairly well, I walk old ladies across the street, and I, you know, don't cheat on, you know, different things, and I'm just kind of a good, well-rounded person, well, I just want to tell you that God says that he will give law to the proud and grace to the humble, he says that in James, now, what does that mean? Well, he's going to give law to the proud. What is law? His standard of goodness. He wants to show you that. If you still have that pride and say, I'm a good guy, he wants to show you his law and say, hey, look, you will not measure up. You will not measure up. You never will. And then he wants to show you his grace, grace to the humble. When you've been humbled by his law, he wants to say, look, I've already paid the price for your sins. You can push away this false facade, uh, this idea that you're you're good because you're not, but based on my sacrifice on the cross, you can have that imputed righteousness, this idea, that's a big word, but this idea that God's righteousness, Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us, that when God sees us, he sees Jesus' righteousness. That is amazing. And I think as we're talking about, you know, as you're talking to people uh, about, you know, God, and the heaven and hell and just kind of trying to share Jesus with people honestly I think you can't miss out on this key idea of what is good what is God's standard do we measure up to God's standard and today if you're still wrestling with that I just want to encourage you look to Christ's standard look to his the standard of goodness and look that you can't meet it but then look to Christ because he has paid this penalty for you and if you trust in him if you repent for that sin, that rebellion, and trust in him, you can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. And that is amazing news. That's the good news of the gospel. So please leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe if you haven't already. I make weekly videos encouraging you to become an authentic, inspired, and passionate disciple of Christ. And um, yeah, we're just continuing to grow on this channel and continue to dive into the issues that matter, have real conversations about real things that matter. I um, appreciate you guys watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye guys.